From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Hey, Dr. Paul. I just want to tell you, you did a good job. Are you happy? All those people were here. You <laughs> were very happy. <laughs> Thank you. Just wanted to let you know. Thank you. This morning, I want to talk a few minutes about uh, Kaposi sarcoma. Kaposi sarcoma is a cancer that causes lesions to grow under the skin and uh, or in the lining of the mouth and uh, nose and throat and uh, even other organs like lungs and uh, legs and the feet. The lesions are usually purple and are made of cancer cells, new blood vessels and white blood cells. You see, it's a malignant vascular tumor and of all the malignant vascular tumors, Kaposi sarcoma is the most common type. There are four subtypes. There is a chronic type, lymphadenopathic, transplant associated and AIDS related and that tells you a lot about the etiology and the manifestation. So there is a chronic type of uh, Kaposi sarcoma, there is a lymphadenopathic type, there is transplant associated Kaposi sarcoma and there is also AIDS related Kaposi sarcoma. It's mostly commonly found beneath the skin, generally in the lower extremity of adults and it's also more common in men than in women and it is endemic in Central Africa. The cutaneous lesions seen frequently in the foot and they are also uh, uh, purplish in color and they are present as nodules. A purplish nodule on the leg you should think of Kaposi sarcoma. It is also associated with AIDS and other immunosuppressive disorders. You see, many times we think of AIDS when we hear about Kaposi sarcoma, that is good, but there are other conditions like lymphomas and uh, multiple myeloma that can also uh, have Kaposi sarcoma. So Kaposi sarcoma uh, its presentation can depend on the immunological status of the patient and uh, the overall mortality rate is like 10 to 20 percent. See, let me give you some history now. Before 1980s, the Kaposi sarcoma is a rare skin tumor in the United States. It's just mostly seen in uh, the men and it's a chronic cause and the fatality rate is very, very less. And, but in Africa, in equatorial Africa, Kaposi sarcoma present in a very aggressive form in, in young black men and that has a very high fatality rate. You see two different areas. In the United States before 1980s, it's a chronic cause, less fatality rate. In equatorial Africa, it's a very high fatality rate. But after 1980s, with the resurgence of uh, AIDS, it is more common, it's becoming more common. In fact, today, one of the uh, Kaposi sarcoma is one of the AIDS defining illnesses. So it's, uh, uh, it depends on um, immunological status. For example, if you have a patient on immunosuppressive treatment and if you uh, stop it, Kaposi sarcoma improves. The other interesting thing is there is a virus, Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus. It is universally present in all these forms. So let me give you the most important things. When you see a red or purplish lesion on skin or mucosal surface as a nodule, then you need to think of Kaposi sarcoma. And uh, that's a very, very important uh, thing. I mean, sometimes you see it and you diagnose other things. Now, human herpes virus 8, HHV8, it is universally seen and it's also related to Epstein-Barr virus. You see, Epstein-Barr virus, it infects B lymphocytes. In the same way, this human herpes virus HH8, it also infects B lymphocytes and it's also a gamma herpes virus. And the antibodies to this particular virus is more common in Kaposi sarcoma. And the other interesting thing is it is it looks like sexually transmitted virus. How do we know this? 
if you take Kaposi sarcoma plus promiscuous gay men, they have more antibodies to this virus than Kaposi sarcoma, for example, in a hemophilia or in multiple myeloma. So H HIV positive gay men, they have a higher zero positivity to this particular virus. So the specific and sensitive antibody assays we have today, they are more positive. The antibody to HHV8 appears to be relatively more common in promiscuous gay men than other groups. Now Kaposi sarcoma is uh, commonly involves the gastrointestinal tracts and you know that you when you see the pictures most of them they show some lesion in the mouth and they are right and you can detect them through fecal occult blood testing. In a symptomatic patient the lesions are not sought or treated and now the gastrointestinal tract can have it and also the pulmonary tracts, the Kaposi sarcoma in the lungs. When it becomes big, patients will have shortness of breath, cough, hemoptysis, chest pain, and all those symptoms specific to lungs. And it could be even asymptomatic, and you take a chest x-ray and it could be an incidental finding. And when this becomes big, you need to, uh, sometimes if you suspect it, you need to go with a, a bronchoscopy. So you see folks, Kaposi sarcoma present in diverse forms on skin, on uh, gastrointestinal tract, on, on the lungs, and uh, on the legs. You see it has this diverse manifestation in uh, different, different areas of the body. So the most important point is the characteristic symptoms. You need to see that cutaneous nodule when you see that cutaneous nodule and it is red or purple in color, think of Kaposi sarcoma. And uh, I haven't stopped there. Even it could present in the lungs. There is this pulmonary Kaposi sarcoma. And on the legs, on the feet, when you see a red nodule on the feet, think of Kaposi sarcoma. Same way in the mouth you see a purple lesion on the mucosal surface. It looks like a plaque. Then think of it. Now, a few words about the treatment. In the elderly patients, all you need is to do palliative oral therapy with intralational chemotherapy or radiation. That's all they need. In an elderly patient which is chronic opposite sarcoma, go with that kind of treatment. And if patient has hydrogenic immunosuppression, then treatment of Kaposi sarcoma is primarily you need to reduce the doses of immunosuppressive medications. You remember, the more immunosuppression, the more aggressive Kaposi sarcoma. So you need to reduce the dose of immunosuppressive medications to make this less aggressive. That itself is the treatment. And when it comes with age, you need to give anti-HIV retroviral medications to treat HIV and that improves this problem. There are other medi uh, treatment modalities like uh, there is cryotherapy, there is intralesional when blasting, and uh, so cryo radiate therapy, cryotherapy, intralesional when blasting, and there is also laser surgery. For example, if it presents in the lungs, go with the laser therapy or in the pharynx, laser therapy. There is systemic therapy in patients with rapidly progressive skin diseases. For example, when they are presenting with edema and pain, and uh, uh, then you need to treat these patients with uh, more uh, aggressive agents. There is liposomal doxorubicin. Liposomal doxorubicin is uh, very effective in controlling uh, the cases, and it has a very high efficacy. So liposomal doxorubicin is another important agent in the treatment. So the other uh, agent is interferon therapy. Interferon therapy and it has shown to be effective in certain patients. And the treatment depends on what is the problem. What is the presentation of Kaposi sarcoma? Is it causing the symptoms or is it just asymptomatic? So you need to think 
across the spectrum. You need to take the clinical symptoms, you need to take the presentation, you need to think about the organ of involvement, and all of those things uh, determine the treatment. So let me briefly summarize and I will finish. The four subtypes I told you, chronic, lymphadenopathic, transplant associated, and AIDS related. Those subtypes itself tells you volumes. It could be chronic, it could be lymphadenopathic, it could be uh, present in transplant associated patients because they, they take a lot of immunosuppression. It could be present in AIDS. And the treatment depends on the presentation of the problem. Hope that helps. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.